If you search for how to brew beer on YouTube, Joshua Weissman's how to brew your first homemade beer video is pretty consistently the first result that pops up. The video is actually incredibly well done and has nearly 3 million views, yet I have a problem with it. You see, there are currently dozens of high quality channels on YouTube that are hyper focused on the art and science of brewing beer at home. Many of these creators have centered their entire lives around this hobby. They live and breathe homebrew beer. Joshua, on the other hand, well, Look, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like beer that much. Yeah, he doesn't even like beer. I'll start off by saying that this is not a criticism of Joshua. In fact, I like to compliment him on the video he made. It's incredibly well done. The shots are beautiful, the flow is perfect, and as a YouTuber, this dude is solid. The beer he brewed looks like it turned out well, and he clearly has some high-level cooking skills. However, Joshua also clearly isn't an experienced home brewer, and some of the advice he gave is eh, questionable. It is a Saison, AKA a French farmhouse ale. It sounds super fancy, but in my opinion, it is the most perfect beginner beer to make, period. Let's go over the issues I have. We'll start with the recipe. First, he recommends that folks start with the French Saison recipe because the yeast used for this beer will do well at room temperature. It's because the yeast that is used in this, you can do it in your own house at room temperature. Okay, I'll start with the compliment. The need for temp control is actually a great observation. In some cases, temp control is necessary and oftentimes beginner brewers don't realize this. So I like that he chose a French Saison based on its temperature range. Good on you, Joshua, for mentioning this. However, as a non-brewer, what Joshua may not know is that the website Brewlosophy has done about a dozen experiments with large panels of experienced beer drinkers on the impact of fermenting lager yeast at room temperature without temperature control. Lager yeast in particular is traditionally fermented at about 55 degrees Fahrenheit, yet these experiments strongly suggest that fermenting lager yeast at room temperature creates differences in the final product that are largely imperceptible among even experienced beer drinkers. This doesn't apply to all yeast, but it does apply to many. So my issue is this, and I'll admit that this is a bit subjective. This French Saison farmhouse recipe actually sounds awesome, but that's a very obscure suggestion. Many potential new brewers have possibly never had a French Saison farmhouse before and will have no idea what it's supposed to taste like. I'm always interested to try a brewery Saison when I go out and drink beer someplace because they're all different. It's a general idea of a style, you know, bright, bubbly, a little spicy, simple, fruit in springtime, low ABV, pop the top and enjoy it. As a home brewer, you obviously want to brew good beer and part of that is knowing what to look for and trying to figure out how to improve. If the brewers never had the style before, how are they supposed to evaluate the results of the creation? This beer is gosh darn delicious. If you're a potential new brewer and you love French Saison farmhouse beers, go ahead and ignore this bit of feedback. However, if you have had Saisons before, you'll probably likely agree that for a lot of people, the Saison style is actually an acquired taste. They're often incredibly yeasty, which some people find off-putting. I actually remember the first time I drank a Saison, I thought it was gross. This beer is gosh darn delicious. I can see a scenario where someone absolutely nails this recipe, but thinks they've screwed it up because it tastes radically different from any beer they've ever had. So I'd perhaps suggest something less complex and less obscure as one's first beer. And given that there are plenty of high temp yeast options to choose from these days, coming up with something a bit more approachable would be no problem at all. And by the way, I've grown to love Saisons, so definitely get out there and try one. The next thing I take issue with is the equipment selection. I like the fact that he features off-the-shelf kitchen equipment. If you're making your first batch ever, there's no need to go out and buy a super fancy all grand brewing system like the ones that we sell. Everything looks good with Joshua's setup, minus one very conspicuous item, which is the glass carboy fermenter. These things were super popular like 10 plus years ago. Although they look really cool, there are all kinds of problems with them. Most notably, they're hard to clean, they're heavy and difficult to move, and most importantly, they're dangerous. Fill one of these full of liquid and it literally weighs about 40 pounds. 
and if it's even just a little bit wet, it's slippery. Plenty of folks have dropped these, shattered them, and even injured themselves. So for these reasons, glass carboys have fallen out of favor with home brewers, and nobody is really recommending them anymore. Most folks opt for stainless steel these days, but even a food grade plastic bucket will do. If you have a glass carboy, go ahead and use it, but please, please, please don't run out and buy one. Okay, so skipping ahead in the video, the next thing I would mention is that you should always turn off the heat to the kettle before adding malt extract. So So bring your pot to a boil, turn off the heat, stir in the extract, make sure it's completely dissolved, then turn the heat back on. Not doing this increases the likelihood that the malt extract will actually scorch the bottom of the pot, which will basically ruin, no, literally ruin the entire batch. And that will be the least of your problems because cleaning up the mess is gonna suck way worse. Finally, I noticed that the wort was added to the carboy at the end of the brew day without any aeration. This is kind of a big thing to overlook. Depending on the yeast and the style, this can be problematic because yeast actually needs a boost of oxygen during the initial stages of its development. So not properly aerating wort before pitching yeast can lead to low attenuation, meaning the yeast won't finish the job and you can end up with something that's called a stuck fermentation. Basically, it's partially fermented beer. It can also cause off flavors, uh, but I don't blame him for not aerating because I wouldn't want to try and shake up a 40 pound slippery glass carboy either, which is another one of the downsides of that solid fermenter. So all in all, it's a very well done video with only a few minor issues and I commend Joshua for introducing his audience to the hobby of homebrewing. Mostly what I take issue with is the fact that their entire channel is about homebrewing that feature content by people who've literally dedicated their entire lives to brewing. I think there are better homebrew videos out there on more qualified channels and I question that this is the best option to put in the number one spot for a search on how to brew beer. And by the way, I wouldn't actually recommend a video on our channel for this slot. Um, yeah, we brew a lot of beer, but we mostly just screw around and have fun. So I'm under no illusion that our channel would actually be considered the best educational resource for a beginner brewer. That said, I do have some ideas for who would, and I will put them in the description below. For more information on how not to make homebrew beer correctly, click on one of these videos because we've done plenty of content on that. Thanks for watching. Cheers.